One of the most amazing things about God is how he can take what people have rejected and despised and turn it around to amaze everyone. The Bible is replete with such examples, and individually, I'm sure many of us know someone who we cannot explain how they moved from obscurity to prominence. Exodus 33, 19 says, Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. The story of Gideon is one of the most well-known examples and can be found in Judges 6-8. Gideon started as an ordinary man living during a tumultuous time in Israel's history. The Israelites had turned away from God, and they were being oppressed by the Midianites. Gideon belonged to the least significant clan in Manasseh, and his family was not well regarded in their community. One day, while Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to hide it from the Midianites, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. The angel addressed Gideon as a mighty man of valor and informed him that he was chosen to deliver Israel from their oppressors. Gideon was initially skeptical and questioned how this could be given his humble background. Gideon sought confirmation from God by asking for a series of signs involving a fleece, wool, and dew, which God granted. Through these signs, Gideon gained confidence in God's calling. With God's assurance, Gideon rallied an army of Israelites to confront the Midianite oppressors. However, God reduced the size of Gideon's army significantly to demonstrate his power. Gideon's force, once tens of thousands strong, was reduced to just 300 men. Guided by God's plan, Gideon and his small army used torches, trumpets, and a surprise attack to terrify and defeat the Midianites in a miraculous battle. God's intervention was evident as the Midianites fled in confusion, and Gideon's victory became a turning point for Israel. Following this remarkable triumph, Gideon gained prominence among the Israelites. They wanted him to be their ruler, but Gideon wisely declined, stating that God alone should rule over them. Gideon's humility and devotion to God were evident in his refusal to establish a dynasty or take personal credit for the victory. Gideon served as a judge in Israel for 40 years, and during his leadership, the land experienced peace and prosperity. However, after his death, the Israelites once again turned away from God, demonstrating the cyclical nature of their history. Gideon's journey from obscurity to prominence is a story of God choosing an unlikely hero and empowering him to execute a task and then propelling him into prominence. In fact, God specializes in using ordinary people for extraordinary purposes. But today's message is not about Gideon. It is about another remarkable character in the Bible, not often spoken about. Not to many people might even know him. His name is Jabez. This was a man who was born under very difficult circumstances. Jabez's mother gave birth to him, and she named him Jabez. His mother named him Jabez, which means he causes pain, because she said, I bore him in pain. This tells us that Jabez's birth was associated with pain or sorrow, which is why his mother gave him this name. I don't think any of us would have appreciated such a reception at birth, plain hostility right from birth. In Jewish culture during that time, names often had significant meanings, and parents sometimes named their children based on circumstances surrounding their birth or other factors. For the mother to have named him pain or sorrow, there must have been some very troubling circumstances she experienced either in conceiving him, during his birth, or both. Jabez was born out of wedlock, meaning that his parents were not married when he was conceived or born. Even now, this can be a hurdle some people need to deal with, but imagine how hard that should have been for a child in a very conservative society at such times. That could have spelt his doom. He may have felt neglected or unloved by his mother, 
who named him after her pain. He may have also faced ridicule or rejection from his siblings or peers, who associated his name with trouble or sorrow and probably not being a legitimate child. Jabez grew up in a time of turmoil and war, as the Israelites were constantly under attack by their enemies. He witnessed violence and bloodshed and would have lived in fear and insecurity, just like the rest of his people. Jabez lived in poverty and hardship, as the land was often plundered and ravaged by invaders. Jabez grew up in a time of spiritual decline, as the Israelites had turned away from God and worshipped idols. False teachings, corrupt practices, and a lack of guidance and direction were the order of the day. Jabez felt distant from God and his promises, as the priests and prophets were rare and silent. He knew there was something missing in their lives, and he knew he needed to connect with the true God. Jabez did not let his circumstances define him or his destiny. He chose to seek God and his blessing and to trust him for protection and provision. Just like Jabez, I don't know what situations have defined your life. I don't know what kind of negativity or labels have surrounded your life and that you might have been fighting to break free from. I don't know what kinds of limitations people have placed on you and the kinds of names they expect you to respond to. But I know one thing, when God comes through for you, irrespective of all those challenges, no one is going to be able to stop or stand in your way. Jabez prayed a short but very powerful prayer of faith and sincerity, and God heard him and granted his request. His influence was so powerful that in the book of Chronicles, the Bible had to single him out. Let's look at what the Bible had to say about him. 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 to 10. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother named him Jabez, saying, Because I bore him with pain. Now Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, O Lord, Bless me indeed and expand my territory. Keep your hand on me and keep evil from me that I may not cause pain. And God granted him what he requested. Have you ever felt trapped in what feels like a hole? Have you ever felt like various situations are threatening to overwhelm you? Do you feel as if there is no way out or there is no hope for you? You may have been born into a family where you were expected to behave within certain limitations and aspiring to move beyond those was frowned upon. It might be that certain experiences as you grew up became limiting factors that made you afraid and forced you to behave in a way that limits what plans God has for you and you are not able to live up to your full potential. Yes. You may have experienced a lot of unmet expectations and lots of disappointments, and you're bemused as to why you may become what the Bible claims you can be. It is essential to understand that our ability to pray holds the key to breaking through these obstacles that can keep us trapped for life. Jabez's life is what many of us would consider a nightmare, a total disaster. Picture not only being surrounded by sorrow, but also having to answer to a name that literally means sorrow. Just imagine being called such he causes pain. How can anyone live a life where everyone who calls them might literally be expecting them to cause pain? By naming her son Jabez, the mother virtually cursed her son and handed him over to a life of misery, pain, and sorrow. She was expecting that her son's future would be filled with lots of misery and anguish. Praise be to God that through prayer, we can move mountains. Jabez came to the realization that he had a choice. Either he keeps answering to that cursed name and lives in misery or breaks the power it had over him by confronting these terrible things through prayer. He did it beautifully and excellently. I am convinced that Jabez was a man of prayer and a man of faith. He had so much faith in God's power of transformation that he boldly called out to him, and God answered him. Jabez, the man you could have correctly described as the cursed man, was now described as noble, in fact, more honorable than his brothers. 
he knew how to tap into divine power to change his story drastically. It is obvious he had a relationship with God. When you have a good connection with God, your life is a wonder. We all do struggle with maintaining a strong connection with God, but we must never stop working at ensuring that link is always active. The fact that the Book of Chronicles had to pause and pay homage to him was very remarkable. This book would have easily ignored him if not for that prayer that changed his destiny. This demonstrates the exceptional power that prayer could give a man to turn his life around. The fact that he was named and then singled out in the book is truly exceptional and remarkable. What can we learn from the prayer of Jabez? There are some peculiar things about his prayer. It was honest. It was well-intentioned and it was in line with the will of God for him and the word of God in the scriptures. God granted his request. He aligned himself with God, thereby pleasing God in his prayer. His request was not trivial. He asked God for what God expected him to ask at that point in his life. The right request to God at the right time is bound to elicit a response from God if your heart is in the right place. That brings us to the issues of the state of our hearts and our attitudes toward God. I didn't say a man of God, I said God. It is easy to find people who relate very well with men of God, but forget to build a relationship with God himself. That is not a healthy relationship and can give room to all sorts of manipulations. I'm not asking you to ignore men of God, but I want you to realize your ultimate connection must be with God. Jabez's attitude was right with God. I can say without a shadow of doubt that God was pleased with him. Our attitude when praying must be right if we want the kind of response Jabez got. For us to pray as Jabez did and get his kind of response, we must first give God preeminence in our lives. 